Welcome to this podcast from Neurogastroenterology and Motility. It publishes original research and topical reviews on basic and clinical aspects of gastrointestinal sensation and motility, as well as brain-gut interactions. So welcome everyone to this month's podcast from Neurogastroenterology and Motility. I'm Adam Farmer. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Wingate Institute in London. This month it's my real pleasure to welcome Dr. Rudolf Schieko, who's an Associate Professor at the Institute of Experimental and Clinical Pharmacology at the Medical University of Graz in Austria. So Rudolf, welcome to the podcast and many congratulations to both yourself and your co-authors on your paper entitled the GPR55 antagonist CID610246 protects against intestinal inflammation. So Rudolf, if I could start off with uh, asking you about what is known about the G-protein coupled receptor 55 and inflammation uh, within the intestine already. Um, actually, not much is known about the intestinal inflammation and the GPR55 receptor. Um, a couple of years ago, we published uh, a paper on a substance named O6 2 which is a GP55 agonist, and we tested the effect in experimental colitis, and we, de- we tested this antagonist also in GP55 knockout mice because it showed beneficial effects in wild type mice. And so we wanted to see if this effect would be present, still be present in the GP55 knockout mouse. So the effect was still there in the knockout mouse, which means that um, O6 2 had off-target effects. But what we also saw was that the inflammation in the knockout mouse was not as severe as in the wild-type mice, and so we pursued the study and planned to investigate GP55 in colitis uh, when a selective antagonist uh, would be available. Otherwise, there's not much known about uh, GP55 and inflammation, gut inflammation. Uh, one work showed that uh, LPS upregulated GP55 expression in the gut, and there was another group that showed that GP55 was downregulated in the dnps induced colitis model. So what's the difference between GPR55 and the uh, canonical uh, cannabinoid receptors? So although GP55 can be activated by endocannabinoids, such as an endomite, um, the receptor is different to cannabinoid receptors in several aspects. Uh, first, GPF55 only shares um, 13 14% of sequence homology with the canonical um, cannabinoid receptors and belongs to a different cluster of receptors. It's more related to the nucleotide binding receptors like P2Ys and also to other GPCRs like GPF55 and GPR18. Then, second, it's uh, among the endogenous ligands that bind to GPF55, it's, the, it's, uh, it's a lysophospholipid, LPI. It is the main ligand, or while, um, and not in the, while the endocannabinoid 2-HE, for example, is not a ligand for GP55. What is also interesting is that certain CB1 antagonists, such as uh, Rimonoband at M251, can activate GP55. A third, uh, the G- GP55 also differs to the CB receptors with regard to signal, stream, signal transduction pathways. So CB receptors, um, usually coupled to inhibitory G proteins, they reduce the production of cyclic A and B, and they open potassium channels and hyperpolarize the cell and lead to an inhibitory action. While GP55, it couples to G alpha 13, uh, 12, 13 uh, G proteins and GQ proteins, and they activate uh, it activates downstream molecules like Rho A and um, also increases calcium release. So this indicates that GP55 probably has a role in cell migration and cytoskeleton remodeling. What do we know about uh, the role of uh, cannabinoid receptors uh, in regards to inflammation within the gut? And is there any data uh, concerning the effect of cannabinoids in patients with inflammatory bowel yeah. disease? Yeah, our understanding about the role of cannabinoid receptors in gut inflammation mostly comes from experimental studies in mice using CB1 and CB2 agonists and antagonists and from, from cannabinoid receptor knockout mice. So already 10 years ago, uh, the, the group of Beat Lutz and Martin Stor in Munich, they already showed that in CB1 knockout mice, that the receptor, that the CB1 receptor uh, is necessary to protect from intestinal inflammation. And later, the, there were studies that showed that uh, blockade of the endocannabinoid degradation system, like uh, enzymes like uh, fatty acid amide hydrolase, 
which is responsible for the degradation of an antimide, um, was protected against intestinal inflammation. And also new CB2 agonists are now, they, um, are now have been now described and, and they are protected against intestinal inflammation. So from the experimental point of view, CB receptors have a, have a protective role in inflammation, but it's not quite clear uh, how this comes about. And um, there are several possibilities of explanation because cannabinoid receptors are part of the so-called endocannabinoid system, which consists of the CB receptors, uh, endogenous ligands, and also the synthesizing and degrading enzymes. And the gastrointestinal wall actually accommodates all of the components of the endocannabinoid system. And it seems that these components are differently expressed in human IBD, uh, which indicates that the endocannabinoid system has a regulatory role in um, disease progress. So what was your hypothesis as you embarked uh, on your study? Um, the hypothesis, when we started out our study, so all we knew about GP55 in the gut was that there was such immediate relaxation through activation of enteric neurons and also through central mechanisms. But there were also in vivo data from the GP55 knockout mouse uh, that the receptor may play a role in urine inflammation. So from the first day that we had from our own experience with the GP55 knockout mice, we hypothesized that a GP55 antagonism would be beneficial in experimental colitis models and the receptor may function contrary to a CB1 or receptor. Uh, that means that the GP55 would be pro inflammatory. And our second hypothesis was that the role of the leukocytes would, uh, that the leukocytes would play an important role in the beneficial effect since GP55 is expressed in quite a few leukocytes, um, such as macrophages, lymphocytes, and neutrophils, and that the antagonist would inhibit the influx of some of these cells. So what uh, methods and experimental design did you utilize in, to investigate your hypothesis? So we, we used two, um, two in vivo models of chemically induced colitis in mice, such as the TSS model and the TNBS models. They are very comparable to human inflammatory bowel diseases. They are driven by lymphocyte macrophage influx, and they all have a specific cytokine release and typical for each of these models. Then we treated, we injected the mice with the antagonist over the course of these um, uh, colitis experiments. Uh, we also used GP55 knockout mice to perform these colitis experiments to confirm our data of pharmacological intervention. And then we scored the extent of the inflammation using an established scoring system. Uh, we prepared histological sections to, to check the severity of the inflammation on a cellular level. We performed analysis to detect changes in cytokine levels. And we performed myelo myeloperoxidase activity assays in Western plots for COX-2 expression to see changes in inflammation markers. Then we used the leukocyte recruitment assay in which we isolated uh, the leukocytes from the colonic lamina propria and determined the cell staphylocytometry. Uh, we applied immunity chemistry to show infiltrated immunocytes in the lamina propria histologically. And we also performed um, uh, migration assays, transfer and point chain migration assays to look at migration of macrophages and neutrophils. And we finally used a behavioral test, open field test, actually to look at the possibility that the antagonist itself may have effects on the central nervous system and could produce psychoactivity. So what were the main result what were the main results from your study? So the main results were the we could show that as an active TB55 inhibitor, if you have a compound identifier name, it's CID160200046, it improved the, the severity of the inflammation in two experimental, um, uh, experimental colitis models. Uh, it was accompanied by a decrease in PO activity, so it, uh, a reduction in inflammation markers and a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF alpha and interleukin beta. Uh, we saw a decrease in the expression of COX-2 in the colon tissue. Uh, we, we, we saw that CD3 positive lymphocytes and macrophages in the lamina propria were decreased after the treatment with the antagonist. Uh, in the migration assays, we saw that the GP55 antagonist could block the migration of the mouse macrophages and that of neutrophils. And we could see that the, in the GP55 knockout mouse, the colitis was uh, much less severe than in wild-type mice. And finally, we could see also in the locomotive and anxiety behavior assays that the antagonists, uh, that the antagonists treated mice were not different from the control mice. 
So given your results, uh, what would you propose as the underlying mechanism of action of uh, GPR55 antagonists? Well, according to our results, the beneficial effect of the GPR55 antagonist probably involves uh, the reduced influx of leukocytes like macrophages and lymphocytes into the colon and also a lower protection of pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin one beta and TNF-alpha. The concept that GP55 may have a pro-inflammatory role in immunity also comes from a recent paper in which the authors could show that GP55 activation increased in a sulfur of protection in LPS activated monocytes and also increased activation marker expression in K cells and that indicates that GP55 activation on leukocytes probably increases cytokine production. But uh, as GPS-65 is also expre expressed in epithelial cells, endothelial cells, and also in the enteric nervous system, um, the additional effects may also be possible. What do you see as the uh, main limitations of your study? Well, the main limitations, as with any animal model, our study uh, employed a chemically induced experimental uh, colitis model and the use of an antagonist in knockout mice. Uh, there's, of course, a certain lack of human relevance. There are other knockout mice models probably that represent human IBD um, better than, for example, in looking 10 knockout mouse. Uh, however, we could show that the drug, the drug uh, had effects in two uh, different colitis models, which are very reminiscent of um, other colitis and Crohn's disease. At the cellular level, we have limited our studies to macrophages and neutrophils. However, T cells may also play an important part, uh, but the, the role of T cells was not covered. And finally, um, the, the study does not include experiments on colonic epithelium um, endothelial cells, which also express GP55 and could be involved in the inflammatory process. So in terms of uh, gazing a little bit into the future, do you think that uh, GPR55 may uh, represent a potential drug target for the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease? Actually, it could. Um, but we, we did not notice any effect on locomotive and uh, anxiety behavior of the drug. So the drug doesn't seem to be sedative or psychoactive. Uh, we did not notice any cell types of toxic effects. Um, however, that, that would need um, further exploration. So when we treated, when we treated um, uh, the, the, um, the models with the antagonist, when we would treat IBT, actually, we would probably not have the problem with psychoactivity, which we would have with the CB1 agonist. So, and also the fact that the GPA55 knockout mouse do not have any phenotype also suggests that uh, GPA55 antagonism may be a safe treatment option for um, inflammatory bowel diseases. So, Rudolf, uh, with that, I'd like to thank you uh, sincerely and your other co-authors for a really excellent paper and also for assisting in this month's uh, podcast and also to our listeners for tuning in. I look forward to welcoming you again to another installment of the podcast next month. Further information about this paper can be found on the journal website. We hope that you have enjoyed this podcast and we look forward to welcoming you to next month's